if you're a historian of medieval Europe, let's just be honest, like your, your job is a lot more detail oriented. You're really like diving into yeah. like really specific uh, records from like back then. But, and, and a lot of Indian scholarship is like that. Sure. But a lot of it is there's like one record and it's just like yeah. wild actually, speculation. Really about point, Cause even like, um, even if you go really back, like the ancient times, right? And you talk about like, you know, the ancient Indus, for example, there's not really much we know about them. Everything is just speculation. Like, right. it's um, like, even like the language that's written on there, like we don't have like a Rosetta Stone and like that can actually decipher what they're saying. It's all just speculation. Right. Yeah, I mean, that kind of speculation, I think, is true of a lot of ancient history in general. Like, I don't know if there's any region in the world where, like, the ancient, ancient history yeah. is, like, that well understood. Um, for what I understand, even, like, something like, say, like, ancient history, our general perception is that Egyptian history is well understood, right? But what's fascinating is, like, say, Egyptian mythology. A lot of what we know is, like, scant records that the Roman Empire kept of Egyptian mythology. Yeah. So, like, it's not even Egyptian records necessarily in a lot of cases. We're like, That's true. our understanding of, of these stories is based off some Roman uh, scholar who was visiting and like was writing about it. And they might write about it, but they're like really biased against it, right? Like, um, yeah, yeah, that's true. I recall there's like Roman writers who refer to the Egyptians as like, uh, oh God, the, the, term escapes me now but they they viewed them as kind of like wasteful a bit wasteful like they viewed the romans themselves as practical people like industrious practical people and they viewed the egyptians as having enormous amounts of wealth but wasting it um yeah so that's interesting because I, i remember on your channel i think you did talk about how the ancient romans and the greeks they actually did once they like conquered Egypt, it was easier for them to trade with India. Yeah. I remember I remember you talking about that on your channel. Yeah, yeah, it's really fascinating. Like most of the Roman c- citizens of note in Egypt were Greeks I- in the Roman Empire who were like yeah. working in Egypt. But it is um yeah, <laughs> I mean, they were so practical. I mean, the Egypt, but the thing is, like, so much of that is our own perception based off Roman records, because like all they did was they just used Egyptian route trade routes to India. Yeah. So it's not even like, it's not like they developed new stuff. It's just, yeah. They just took whatever the Egyptians were already doing, but it's kind of like pseudo colonialism anyways. um, What the Romans did in Egypt, because I don't know if you've heard this phrase, but uh, Mm -hmm. I think Augustus Caesar said that he came, God, I'm going to butcher this quote, but he like came to Rome. It was like, he he left Rome a city of marble, but when he came to it, it was like a city of oh, I know from Maria. I think it was like something that. like um, brick. Came, yeah, I, I know what you're talking about. I know what quote you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, I'm I, totally I, butchering I, the quote, but yeah, um, essentially he's just he's just talking about how Rome wasn't actually that wealthy when he yeah. came to the fore, but when yeah. he left, he left it extraordinarily wealthy. But a big reason why Rome was so wealthy is because they had they were ruling over Egypt and they were yeah. they had essentially colonized Egypt and they were yeah. um, extracting its resources for the Roman Empire's benefit.